Cliff Johnnybax Josephy is known as the godfather of online poker. Originally a Wall Street player, he eventually transitioned from one form of risk benefit assessment to another when he became a full time poker pro. He was one of the original legends of online poker and he continues to dominate both online and live. He has cashed for millions online and over 1.3 million live. Josephy also runs a video training site for poker players at PokerXFactor.com along with Eric Sheets Haber and Scott Mindwise Pendergrast. He enlists the biggest names in online poker to create training videos for the site and PokerXFactor has been cited as a turning point educational tool for many of today's top players. Now, Josephy is on the phone with us today to talk strategy. Uh, so how you doing today, Cliff? I'm doing great, Sean. You? I'm doing really good. Well, so obviously you're more than just the run-of-the-mill poker player. Uh, aside from actually playing poker, you also run PokerXFactor.com, of course, and you connect with poker players in a lot of other ways as well. As a result of all of that, you're really a big part of a lot of other big-name internet poker pros' lives. So how do you see your role in the poker community, especially the online poker community? Uh, I think you're giving me, you know, way too much credit. I mean, you know, yeah, I, I play poker and I, I interact with uh, with all these guys. I think the Poker X Factor thing is 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 great in that we are able to uh, bring a you know a great product to a lot of people and really help them advance their games to the next level and the level after that, et cetera, et cetera. Um, as far as uh, being a big part of, you know, I think you said other other big name internet poker pros lives or whatever you said. Um, I don't know if I'm a big part. I'm just, you know, I'm at the table with them and, you know, we're trying to have a good time together and that's really about it. Okay. Well, you've done a ton of videos for Poker X Factor, of course, and I mean you personally have done a ton of videos and you've taught people quite a bit, but you also have an army of guest trainers who also do videos. Was there ever a guest trainer video that you thought that you learned something particularly mind-blowing from? Oh, this this question just brings out what what an absolute knucklehead I am. <laughs> I mean, I have seriously, I have um, I have the ability, okay, to view all of these videos from all of these wonderful, wonderful guys, and there is something oh, and major things uh, that I could learn from each and every one of them. And we wouldn't put these guys on unless unless they were very, very strong players with the ability to teach. Uh, however, they're just, you know, and, and I should, but there just has not been enough time in my day for me to view any of the videos at all. I look at the first 10 or 15 minutes from each person just to make sure that they sound okay uh, and that they're able to communicate correctly, et cetera. And then I just give the approval to, uh, to MindWise and who, who, who runs, uh, who runs Poker, X, Poker X Factor, Scott Pentagrast, and, uh, and go on with it. And I always make myself a... Uh, you know, a note that I have to go back and watch some of these videos. For me not to watch, you know, Eight Styles videos or Pearl Jammers or Kevin's, and, and I don't mean to leave anybody out, BR Savage Risen, I, I, I apologize if I'm leaving anybody out, just off the top of my head, innocent, obviously. And Sheets, I hear doing them, you know, 12, 12 feet away, I hear them doing the videos, so I don't watch them. And we talk poker all day long. But for me not to use these tools, which are at my disposal, at, at my disposal is just plain silly. But there just aren't enough hours I like to spend, uh, I like to spend time playing, I have other stuff going on, uh, you know, have a wife and three kids, and you know maybe I should cut out some of my play or some of the other stuff, and watch some of these videos because I know it would help. Um, but I've been I've been a real idiot in the fact that I haven't. And we also have you know I, we also have tons of hand histories on Poker X Factor from you know from from champions where I could just go through the hand histories and uh, you know and they've made them public for people to see you know and like Annette who just won the World Series of Poker Europe and I haven't gone through any of those. Um, Knucklehead, that's it. I'm a knucklehead. <laughs> well, I think you would agree that poker is an ever-evolving game. And given that, and given the fact that you probably aren't in the habit of deleting older training videos from Poker X Factor, do you ever come across videos that you've done that tell people to do something that you really wouldn't recommend to do anymore? Well, I don't go back and look at my videos, but I, I don't think so. Um, what I'll tell you is that you know, you're you're 100 percent correct. It's always evolving. It, it's nonstop in that regard, and that's the beauty of it, and why I still love it after playing for three and a half years. But the thing that we teach is that you always have to adapt to your table. So back a few years ago, when I made my first video, the tables were a lot easier to run over. There weren't 
too many people, if any, playing back at you. And you would just get a lot of chips just from raising and no showdown, or raising, make continuation bet, no showdown, et cetera. Now it's a lot different. You have guys playing back at you, um, so there's no reason to open raise unless you have a real hand. Um, and sometimes if you know a lot of other guys are, are opening light, so you have to re-raise them light uh, to keep them in line and also to build your chips because you can't open because people will play back at you. But what I'm saying is that the videos are very, very, very applicable in the fact that you still run at the tables where you can run them over. You just can't run over uh, 99% of the 100 rebuy tables, you know, um, you, but you can still run over the smaller buy-in tables. And, and, and remember that a lot of, a lot or the majority of our subscribers are the guys playing the smaller buy-ins. They're learning and they want to get better. So they're still able to, you know, there's not a whole lot of re-raising going on in the, you know, in the $10 tournaments um, like there is in the 100 rebuy and the 1,000 no limit, et cetera, et cetera. So there's a ton of stuff to learn. And, you know, we're really teaching the concepts behind everything and the, the ideas. And just because um, you won't be able to use, you know, uh, use some of the stuff as, as readily um, today as, as you were able to use it two years ago, you know, understanding the concepts and the reason behind doing what we do is really by far the most important thing. So, uh, no, the videos are still, the videos are still great. Okay. Well, and for a long, long while now, the loose, aggressive playing style has supposedly been the winningest style, and a lot of people, like, really go out of their way to tout its virtues. Do you count yourself as a loose, aggressive devotee, or do you disagree with the notion that it's the best style to play? Well, it's, it's interesting that you bring that up, and I'll, uh, I guess I'll make an analogy. It's always been... Um I mean, you can go back to tennis, and you know, there was one point where serve and volley was was great. And you had like, then you had like a Bjorn Borg who had like just the phenomenal ground strokes, and he was unbeatable until John McEnroe came in and he found a style that was able to beat Bjorn Borg, and so on and so on. And I view myself as sort of a chameleon. I just adapt to whatever I have to do on a particular day, in a particular month, a particular year, a particular table, whatever it is to get the job done. Like if I posted somebody my stats from the from the stars uh five hundred dollar no limit on Sunday and I basically saw no flops the entire day. I mean just like incredibly tight because that was the way that I had to play on that day. So I think that, you know, it doesn't really matter what style you what style you play. I don't really wanna well, I can't really, I can't really label myself as as lag or tag or anything. I mean, it's amazing. That a lot of people think I'm incredibly loose. What happens is they 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 see me at the top of a uh, a tournament a, to a tournament lobby online. They pull me up. They see me active. Yeah, because I have the most chips. Of course, I'm going to be you know more active than normal. Um, but there are times where I'm at the bottom of the pack where I'm incredibly tight. So I just I play the way that I feel I have to play given the conditions that I'm playing in. I mean, it's as simple as that. You know, you can't, you can't be one way all the time. You have to understand, you know, what you're able to take from other people and what you can't take from other people and, you know, and adapt accordingly. Okay. Well, and again, given poker's ever-evolving and adaptive nature, do you think that the loose, aggressive style is kind of on the way out anytime soon? I mean, <laughs> Sean, I'm not a visionary. I have no idea what's happening next. I, mean, I just, I just don't know. Maybe No Limit Hold'em's, you know, going to be out, and everyone's going to be playing Raz. <laughs> I sincerely uh, doubt that. <laughs> <laughs> I doubt it too. Well, you recently won the $200 rebuy tournament on Poker Stars, so congrats on that, first of all. <laughs> yeah, that was a uh, suck out a thon. That was. Um, <laughs> That, I mean, that was just that was just pure luck at the final table. It was incredible how uh, how lucky I was there. <laughs> well, I mean, that event is notorious for its incredibly stacked field. So, uh, how often are you playing poker lately, and what is your ratio between online and live poker? Um, I play roughly, you know, four days a week for you know daytime sessions, you can call it. Um, and then I play, you know, four nights a week, generally, um, the four strongest online nights. And and that's it as far as online is concerned. And then live, I try and get out, like, once a month whenever I don't have um, conflicts with other stuff at home. And, I mean, for instance, we met last year at the Five Diamond uh, in December at the Bellagio, you and I. Mm -hmm. And... 
you know, I had some success there in the uh, 15K buy-in main event. And obviously, uh, I would love to play that again, but I have something at home uh, that week, so I can't do that. Um, but I'll get out there for some preliminaries. And, you know, I try and get out, I try and get out if I'm able to once a month, and I try and go to places where I can get back quickly if I bust out. You know, I'm not going to be playing Macau or Sydney <laughs> or even Europe anytime soon because, I, I mean, I just want to, if I bust, I have a, you know, have an obligation to come home and, and be right back with the, you know, with the family, which is why I passed on Aruba again this year. Um, you know, it's just, it's just, it was just easier to play the Trump, which is three hours away from home, than Aruba where they only have flights going out one time, you know, one time a day. It's just not fair. So, yeah, I mean, I play, I play a little bit live. I try and play live. I enjoy playing live. But it's just, you know, it's hard with a wife and three young kids. For sure. Well, when you do play live, how much credibility do you give to online tells? I'm sorry. Did to live tells? Live tells, the physical tells. Yeah, um, yeah. There are people that base, you know, a, a lot of their game on live tales, and my game from, from, you know, growing up, if you will, and online is based on, you know, betting patterns. However, you know, there's a lot that people give away live. There's just a whole lot, and it's really easy to pick up on if you just pay attention. So, you know, live tells are fantastic. My game isn't based on it, but it's just, you know, it's just another wes- uh, another weapon in the arsenal, so to speak, I guess. Okay. Well, can you remember any instances where you picked up on a legitimate tell and it helped you in a big hand? Uh, I mean, all the time, yeah, of course. I mean, yeah. Are is there a certain kind of tell that, like, is more reliable than others that you've noticed? As, as opposed to betting patterns, like a physical tell, any kind of... Yeah, I mean, you know, there are, there, are, there are a lot of different things. There's, you know, there are ways that guys act in their chair. There are ways they cut out chips. There are ways they talk. Whether they're looking at the flop, look away from the flop. There's there's a guy that every time he's got a big hand, he yawns and looks to his or like stretches and looks to his left. He plays no hands, and the three hands that he plays, or the three hands that he played the entire day I play with him, he just he just looked out to the rest of the room on his left, and all three times he had the stone cold nuts. <laughs> um, yeah, there's a lot of stuff that people give away, and you you just have to pay attention, and it's really hard. Um, you know, I like to focus, but there's always somebody sitting next to me to. Take table and I'm and I'm I'm talkative, you know, I I enjoy the company. Um and you know, a lot of times I, I miss some stuff because because I'm a little bit social at the tables. I mean so it's you know, there's a trade off. Um so I mean you can't go through your entire life not enjoying yourself. So I mean it's not all about the money. So if I miss a little bit I can handle that. Um you know, I enjoy sitting there, and, and it's fun to talk to people and interact. So uh, I don't blame myself for doing it. But if I sat there and put some sunglasses on and you know, and a hoodie on and didn't talk to anybody, I'd probably pick up a lot more stuff. Okay. Now here's my last question. And it's probably the probably the hardest one to answer. Who do you think is the most underrated internet pro out there right now, and why? I think I'd be doing a tremendous disservice to a lot of guys if I if I pick just one. There are really just so many guys out there that do almost everything right that people don't talk about, people don't know about. And uh I mean there there are just a lot, you know. There were just a lot. And, you know, pretty soon these guys will be winning the big tournaments and people will notice them. Um you know, it's a very it's a very fickle game and cyclical game. You know, people come out of nowhere and they start winning big tournaments online. And um, this question was online, right? Yeah, you said Internet Pro, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, they come and go. I mean, it, it goes in spurts. You know, once you're confident, you start winning stuff, and then these people disappear for a while. So, um, I mean, they're, you know, I see a lot of guys that are doing that are doing a lot of the right things, and uh, you know, I'm sure they'll be winning big tournaments. I don't want to, I don't want to put too much pressure on anybody and give a name out, though. <laughs> <laughs> That'd probably kill somebody's career. <laughs> so, I don't want to do that. No <laughs> okay. offense. Well, that's all I got for you. I really appreciate you taking the time for this interview, and thanks a lot. Sean, thank you very much. Take care. I'll see you in a couple weeks out at the Bellagio. Sounds great. Take care. And thank you for watching the Online Zone on Card Player TV. 